Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from exitautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our API testing with REST Sharp and SpecFlow course. And in this way we'll be talking about installing JSON server for API testing. And this is a very very super simple JSON server that is going to replicate pretty much like how we're going to use the API testing in the real world. So let's quickly see how we can install the JSON server and start using it and you will understand how we can leverage the power of fake JSON server within our REST Sharp course. So let's get started. So I'm going to search for what is called as a JSON server and the JSON server is nothing but this one. A very very simple fake JSON server that we're going to be using because I don't really have a real JSON server and I don't really want to show a real JSON server of how it actually works because that's going to be costing me. Rather, even if you want to try that yourself within your own machine, you can actually use this JSON server to see how we can leverage the power of REST Assured. So the JSON server is very very simple. All you have to have is a node package manager installed within your Windows operating system and the same applies to Mac operating system as well. And then you can install the JSON server within your machine and once it is installed you can create a JSON file something like this. As you can see there is something called as posts, comments and profile and then you can start the JSON server by pointing to this particular db.json file so that you can then create a request something like this and you will get the response something like this. Very very simple and straightforward. So I have already installed the JSON server in my machine so if you could see the JSON server so if I just type it you can see it is going to show me some options here which means I have already did the npm install hyphen g json server within my machine before that i have also installed the npm within my windows so that you can install these kinds of operation right so make sure you install npm first and then you install the json server once it is installed you need to create a db.json file within any one of your directory i have already created one in my c colon slash json folder so i can actually show you that which is going to look something like this one as you can see there are some posts this is the ID and this is another ID with another course. So I'm going to give this ID as two and this is going to be Appium and author is uh, Karthi KK here. And then there is ID number three, which has no title and no author here. So maybe there are some comments and there are some addresses within here and there is some profile. So I'm just going to save this complete uh, file. And then if I want to run the JSON server right now, I can just put the JSON hyphen server and then I can just point the db.json which means this is going to be the file which is going to be the input for this server and if I hit enter here you can see it automatically invokes an application for us and then I can just go and see the different kinds of operations that I can do so if I hit localhost colon 3000 slash post it's going to show all the different combinations of posts that we saw in the db.json file right Similarly, if I just go to the home page, you can see it brings you all the different options like posts, comments, profile, address, and DB. So DB, you don't really have to worry about it yet, but you can see there is something called as addresses. It's an object type, and you can see all the different addresses it is available. Similarly, you can see that there is a profile. There you go. And there is a comments. So if I hit that, you can see there are comments coming in. So all of these options are going to be automatically coming in for you based on the db.json file that you have created. So that said, we are going to be using this particular application under test to perform different kinds of operation. So for instance, if I want to get the first post, I can just do something like this and see this is a path parameter. So I'm just going to give the path parameter here and I actually get the first post here. If I want to do a query parameter, something like id, something like this, you can see that I can actually get the first post. So if I do 2, you can see I get the second post. So I can do the query parameter here as well. And similarly, I can do various different operation with this particular fake JSON server. This is really, really cool. You can actually go to their GitHub web page and you can see that you can perform operations something like something like operators so you can see something like greater than or lesser than and similarly you can do a full text search using this one and similarly you can do a relationships like expand embed and also you can limit the search i guess there is something called as 
filter or something or limit or something i still don't remember very clearly so if i just do something called as limit there you go you can limit the number of search as well so if you could see in the post we saw there were three posts and then if i want to limit that to maybe two i can actually do that as well so let me see if i could be able to do that so I guess it's kind of query parameter and it's underscore limit to two. So you can see I can only see two posts here. So you can keep on doing a lot of different combinations of options like sorting and full text search using this particular fake JSON server. So we are going to be extending this fake JSON server even further by authentications and basic authentication and also beer authentication tokens and all those different operation in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, since we are going to be dealing with some of the basic operations using REST Assured API, we'll not be discussing about all these operations right now. Rather, as the course evolves and progresses, we'll be adding those features within our JSON server as a fake authentications and we'll be using the power of rest assured to pass those authentication token and then see how the response can be obtained so that's it guys that's for today thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day